Hello, my internet friends. My name is John Jagsney, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to bring an Illustrator file into After Effects in the most efficient way possible for logo animation or say some Instagram templates or whatever else. So without further ado, let's go into this computer machine and talk about how to take Illustrator files, bring them into After Effects. So to prepare a logo for some logo animation, you're gonna start in Illustrator and the first thing you'll probably get from a client or a friend or a graphic designer is a branding guide or the logo in vector format. So this is Whalebird Kombucha designed by my very good friend, Mr. Dan Adolph. And uh, we're gonna take one of his logos from Illustrator and bring it into After Effects. To do that, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna copy one of these logos. So we'll just select this guy right here, make a box around that, Control C to copy, go to File, New, and then you'll see I have this 4K preset right here. Basically, you need to make a composition that is going to match the, dim the dimensions of what you're working with in After Effects. So I'm gonna be animating a 4K logo animation. So that will be a 3840 by 2160 artboard. I'll just double click that preset and then Control Shift D to get rid of the transparency grid. It's still there, but it just makes it a little bit easier to work with. Control V to copy that logo and we'll see it's right there. It's very small. I don't know why Illustrator does this, but we're just gonna make sure we have the selection tool selected. Big box around that, hold shift, and then drag that logo out. Center that up. Maybe make it just a little bit bigger and we can see on the artboard how big our composition will be. So somewhere in the center, I think that's centered, okay. So now that we have this, we can see it's on one layer. And then what we need to do now is convert this into many, many layers so that we can play with layers in After Effects. So to do that, let's release everything. We can see, oh my God, there is a lot of stuff here. So to convert everything to layers first, we see all these paths here. We just need to make sure we select the top layer, the master layer, click on the little far right here and that will select everything. Click on the three lines in the upper right hand corner and make sure we click on select release two layers sequence. And very conveniently, that sets all the paths that we had and everything in here into layers. So now what we can do is we can take the first layer, layer two in this stack and then go all the way down to the bottom and then just bring it out. So for After Effects, what you need to do is make sure that the, just make sure that every single layer that you're gonna be working with is on its own layer. Otherwise, you'll have to dig through a bunch of mini layers and uh, inter layers in After Effects and it just takes more time. So after I do this step, then what we need to do is name all your layers because that is a good practice to do. So we could go through this entire stack and just basically poke the little eye out to be to see where all the layers are. So this is batch, so we'll just double click that, batch, and just go right down the line. I'm not gonna make you watch that, I already did that. So we're just gonna open that really quick. Go into my wheelbird elements, 4K named layers, and hey, there it is. And what I did here is you'll see that there's actually less layers here. And the reason why I did that is I condensed some of the things that I know I didn't need to work with. So I have the individual teeth in separate layers. If I wanted to do something with the teeth in After Effects, I brought out the whale texture. So that's the uh, sort of the, the white path where the, the whale lives, like the main part of it. And then I have the eye here, we can find that. So we have little bits of the eye if we wanted to animate just the little element right there or right there, that little dot. You get the idea. I have all these parts of the logo separated so then now I can basically control everything I want to in After Effects. 
videos. Now, we're not gonna do a full logo animation tutorial with this because otherwise this would, this would take very, very long going over how to animate paths and shapes and the puppet tool. I'm gonna show you how to bring this into After Effects now. All you have to do is just hit the import button in After Effects. But before you do that, let's go back to the original composition that we were working with just to demonstrate the last thing I forgot to mention, make sure you save this. So this is the Whalebird logo 4K and I'll just add a little note at the end of that. Underscore tutorial. Just click OK. So now that is saved and we have all these layers here. Let's go back to the 4K named layers just so that we don't need to waste time with everything there. All we need to do now is go into After Effects and we see how I have this blank composition here. What we're gonna do is we're going to select the folder where we want the assets to live. So I'll typically put all my vector files in elements. So we can see I already did that for the logo animation that I showed earlier, but what we're gonna do is import that once again. So we'll hit Control I once we have the vector folder selected. And then those are my photos of some Halo thing that I did. Let's go to that whale bird elements, 4K named layers. So we could select the tutorial one if we want, but it would literally do the same exact thing. So let's just go with the named layers. And we're gonna make sure we have the import kind set to composition and the footage dimensions set to layer size. And that will retain the dimensions of each layer. So if, let's say if you have the, the, the whale shape, for example, it will retain the whale shape. It won't make the shape as big as the composition. It'll tr stick with whatever the size of the path is. So click okay. And we can see we have a composition here and then we have a folder where all the vector files will live, all named accordingly. And then if we go into this new composition that was just made, we can see, hey, there's the logo. That's super convenient. It's already in After Effects with all the named layers. Now there's one small problem with this, and that is the fact that your Illustrator file is still retained in After Effects, which is, if you think, it's a good thing, but if you were to try and scale this up, say hypothetically make a null object to control this, which is just a tool in After Effects that controls data. So we'll select all of those layers and link it to the null. So then this null will control the actual full logo. We can move it around by itself. We can scale it up. But here's the problem with the vector file format in After Effects. It does not rasterize them, which means it will retain the dimensions and the resolution of it. So what we're gonna do is we will select all of those layers, the Illustrator layers in After Effects. We're gonna right click, create, and create shapes from vector layer. And that will create shape layers in After Effects. Now we did get this error box here and I knew that was gonna happen because it is not recognizing the text as layers. So we can click okay and we can see all these new layers were selected and created, but there's a handful of Illustrator layers that are still there, still with the eye there, while the ones that were created into shape layers had the eye poked out. We don't see them anymore because we're now using shape layers. What After Effects and Illustrator did is it recognized the text versus the actual paths. So we know, unfortunately, that the text in Illustrator is actual text files. But that's not the worst thing in the world, and here's why. Because it's actual text and not paths, we can just copy and paste that into After Effects. So if we go to the very top, we double click our text tool, and we'll see we have some empty text. We'll just call this placeholder for now. And now we have some placeholder text. And if we just solo that and turn off the transparency grid, there's some text. Now, if we go back to the Illustrator file, we can select the text layer, Whalebird, hit T, make sure we have the text tool selected, Control A, copy, and then go back to After Effects, double click that, Control V, and it will still retain whatever character properties exist in Illustrator and bring them over to After Effects. Now we can see it is uh, 
left aligned. So we'll just center align that just because I like working with center aligned. And then we will center that anchor, anchor point, control, alt, shift, home. And then we will unsolo that. We can see we have text that is identical to the whale bird text. We can just drag that like so. Make sure your snapping is on. And get that right in place. Snapping is up there, by the way. Sometimes it might be off, so you can use the arrow keys to nudge it into that perfect spot. And you can go all the way down to the whale bird illustrator vector logo part, delete that, and hey, look, the text is there. Now, we could do that for every single one, but very conveniently, once again, what I did is I did all of this stuff already in the sample. We can see the logo animation sample. I have the text layers already built out and I have this very simple logo animation of the whale bird logo. And the reason why I show you this, even though you don't need to know this for this part of the tutorial of just learning how to bring something into After Effects is that if you're a graphic designer and illustrator and you're working with a motion designer, it would be very beneficial to help them out a little bit and break everything up into layers or name your layers so that when they actually have to go to the animation stage, they're not trying to rebuild everything from scratch. Now, what the After Effects animator should know how to do is once those they know what they want to do with the animation, they'll manipulate the paths, but you can also do fancy things to help them out as well. But that's it. That's how you bring Illustrator files into After Effects and make them usable for motion designers. I know we covered a lot, but the main thing I want you to remember is separate your layers in Adobe Illustrator, name your layers so that motion designers and After Effects users can just hit the import button and get started with rebuilding that logo in the most efficient way without having to like break up all those layers and figure out what the project structure is. That's it. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. I think we're up to 240 subscribers now. One little fun fact, I actually don't know if you subscribe, if you have your subscriber information hidden or subscription information hidden. So if you would like a shout out and you do subscribe to me, let me know in Instagram DMs at John Jagsney and I'd be more than happy to give you a shout out. Uh, I didn't get any new emails, but we're up to think 240 now. So thank you very much, my new friends. I appreciate you joining the channel and all of that fun stuff. Until next time, my name is John Jagsney. Eat your protein, one gram per pound of body weight. I'm gonna go make some protein lunch, probably some chicken and potato and whatever, and enjoy that. I hope you enjoy your day. Goodbye, my friends. Stay safe, stay healthy during this whole COVID-19 stuff. Bye. Put the place up.